challenge of the Chinese Communist Party and the threat that it poses to the United States and our allies is of critical importance to us right now. I think in the long term, in terms of American security policy, China is going to be a much more powerful country than Russia. There's no country that presents a broader, more comprehensive threat to America's innovation, to our economic security, and to our democratic ideas than China does. I believe we've got to live in reality. Communist China, it wants to control the entire world, including Americans. Let's be clear, the Chinese Communist Party is a Marxist-Leninist organization. The party general secretary, Xi Jinping, sees himself as Joseph Stalin's successor. China's a longer-term threat, and we need, to, we need to be very clear-eyed about what they are and what they aren't. They're not our partner. They're never going to be our partner uh, under the existing leadership team. Under President Xi's rule, the Chinese Communist Party is heading even faster and further in the wrong direction. More internal repression, more predatory economic practices, more heavy-handedness, and most concerning for me, a more aggressive military posture. For China, success is a zero-sum game. China is going to eat our lunch? Come on, man. I mean, I, you know, they're not bad folks, folks, but guess what? They're not a, they're, they're not, not a competition for us. On the surface, that's a really puzzling thing to say. Joe Biden saying China is not really a threat. China is America's chief rival on the global stage, and nobody should know that better than Joe Biden. I mean, during the Obama-Biden administration, they actually recalibrated foreign policy to contain China. It was called the pivot. China has never loomed larger in our lives. Think about it. The economy, trade, espionage, now COVID-19. China has said openly that they want to supplant us as the world's superpower. But Joe Biden talks about China differently. China is not our enemy. Not a problem. What are we worried about? Come on, man. He doesn't see them as a threat. And I believe then what I believe now, that a rising China is a positive, positive development. He welcomes their rise as a global power. Why exactly? Perhaps it's personal. Perhaps it's about his family. Perhaps it's about the money. December 2013, Vice President Joe Biden is arriving in Beijing for a series of sensitive meetings with Chinese officials. The Chinese give him the red carpet treatment, literally. But also along for the trip, Joe Biden's son, Hunter Biden. During the visit, Joe Biden meets with Chinese Vice Premier Li and with President Xi. A 2013 trip to China getting new attention this morning, not for what Joe Biden did, but for who he brought with him. And what was Hunter Biden doing? We're not sure. He doesn't appear in many pictures of the official festivities. But what we do know is this. 10 days after father and son returned to the United States, Hunter Biden's small investment firm announced a $1 billion private equity deal with the Chinese government. And where did the capital come from for this deal? From the Chinese government itself.
Unknown to the press back then, Hunter Biden was forming a Chinese private equity fund, planning to raise money, including from Chinese investors. Years later, Hunter Biden acknowledged that during the trip, he met with a Chinese banker, which his spokesperson describes as a social visit, not a business one. I believe then, and I'm even more convinced now, that a rising China is an incredibly positive development for not only China, but the United States and the rest of the world. Hunter's small firm got a deal that no one else had in China. Not Morgan Stanley, Goldman Sachs, Deutsche Bank, or UBS. And are you vulnerable on this issue at all because of your son's business dealings in, in China? No, I don't believe so at all. My son's business dealings were not anything with everybody that he's talking about, not even remotely number one. What's interesting is Hunter Biden had no real background in China, in finance, or private equity. In fact, Hunter had what might be called a spotty resume. A couple of youthful jobs, owing directly to his father's influence. He was once made a director of Amtrak based on the fact that he'd ridden on trains. He'd been addicted to crack cocaine, had an unsettled domestic life, and a brief attempt at a naval career ended with a discharge over drug use. So why did the Chinese pick him? Spring 2017. Patrick Ho, a Chinese businessman, was arrested by the FBI on bribery charges. He worked for a Chinese energy company with close ties to the Chinese military. While in FBI custody, Ho made two phone calls. One of those, strangely, is to James Biden, Joe Biden's brother. Why did this man call the brother of the vice president? He was looking for Hunter. This is the remarkable and largely hidden story of the secret financial relationship between the Biden family and the Chinese government. It's a relationship that grew while Joe Biden was vice president of the United States. And shortly after, he was appointed the point person on US policy towards China. Our investigation is based on corporate records, financial documents, legal briefings, and court papers. It's the story of the second most powerful man in the world at the time, and how his family was striking deals with America's chief rival on the global stage, the People's Republic of China. And it's a story that has been largely never told. A rising China is a positive development, not only for the people of China, but for the United States and the world as a whole. 